I know that I've been gone for a while, but I've been waiting for, well, a good reason to come back. And it seems like the launch of the new GoPro Hero 7 is a pretty good reason. So this new camera is launching with four big features. Hyper smooth video, super photo, live streaming, and time warp video. Before we dive into those features though, let's look at the outside of the camera. It's got the same basic form factor as the Hero 5, the Hero 6, and their Hero. Well, it is a slightly darker shade of gray. Now, this battery from your Hero 5 and your Hero 6 will still fit into the Hero 7. Because this camera has the same form factor as its two predecessors, it means that it will fit in the same frame, the same dive housings, the same gimbals, with the only difference really being that darker shade of color. And on that note of color, they haven't done a great job matching it. The side, the bottom, and the side with the flap that cover up the uh, USB Type-C port and the micro HDMI port is a much more metallic looking gray than the rest of the rubberized edge. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but definitely to the eye, there are two distinct shades of gray on the side of it. But let's be honest, that's just nitpicking at this point. GoPro sent me out this Hero 7 Black early so I could check it out and get the review posted when the camera launched. Now, it also looks like they're going to be launching lower tier white and silver edition cameras. I haven't had any hands-on time with them, but um, well, if you guys wanna see me check them out, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do about getting them. The image from the Hero 7 in my testing looked quite similar to the Hero 6, although the two do not appear to be identical. The biggest problem is that out of the box, the camera comes with sharpening turned up to high, which produces some really over sharp looking images that you just, they're not very nice. GoPro's own literature and even the card that comes with your camera telling you how to shoot with it suggests that you shoot with ProTune on and with sharpening turned down to minimum. And I highly, highly recommend you do this. It's easy to add sharpening in post, but it's very, very hard to get rid of it. The typical GoPro fisheye, which people have very strong opinions about, is still present. However, as before, it's easy to put the camera into linear mode and remove this fisheye look. Zooming in and out is still a thing, although as before, it can only be done before you begin recording. And as it is done by cropping the image, it produces quite a soft image, as you can see by the sample footage. The large dynamic range, which was present on the Hero 6, is still present on the Hero 7 and definitely allows a lot of separation to be seen between images taken on the Hero 7 and the Hero 5, although that separation gets a lot smaller once you start comparing images from a Hero 6 to a Hero 7. Now we shift from image related things to just usability related features. And one of the things I noticed immediately when I started using the Hero 7 was the speed at which the camera picks up which orientation it's in. With the Hero 6, if anybody out there has used them, you know that sometimes it gets a little sticky if it's upside down and you flip it back over, it'll take it a couple seconds to maybe recognize. And I know that personally, I've ended up with a lot of footage that's the wrong way I've had to flip it in post just because the camera hasn't picked up on that orientation change quickly enough. The Hero 7, you don't see that. When you turn that thing over, it immediately flips to whatever orientation it is that you're shooting in. But it doesn't just flip between right side up and upside down. Oh no, the curse of vertical video is still present and still with us. And now even your GoPro can shoot vertical video. GoPro even recommends that you shoot in six in four by three aspect ratio in vertical mode. So it's perfect to post to Instagram. Great, yay. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I guess there's people out there who are gonna find that super cool, so good for you. But now let's talk about the first of those four killer features, hyper smooth video. So the Hero 5 hit him in camera stabilization, the Hero 6 made it significantly better, and with the Hero 7, it has gotten even better. The image in camera image stabilization is crazy, it's amazing. It is still not a gimbal, and if you watch the, uh, the sample footage, we've got a Hero 6 mounted on a gimbal compared to the Hero 7. You can see that the Hero 6 mounted on the gimbal does produce a more smooth, 
more flowing video that is mounted on a Feutech G6. So that video still looks better than the Hero 7's video, but the Hero 7's video looks pretty close. The biggest difference between the gimbal footage and the Hero 7's footage is that the gimbal always keeps the camera in that upright orientation. The Hero 7 does a great job of getting rid of the bumps and the bounces, but the Hero spot or the Hero 6 on the gimbal because it's got three axes of rotation just keeps that camera pointing straight forward even when I uh, hold it not square. But what gets even more impressive is when we take the Hero 6 out of the gimbal and just compare the two in-camera stabilization systems. What we thought was really good in-camera stabilization just a year ago when we had the when the Hero 6 launched compared to the Hero 7 looks unbelievably well the hero 7 is just another step up and we can take that one step further and we'll take a hero 5 without in-camera stabilization turned on at all so this is no in-camera stabilization and compare that to the hero 7 and the difference here is unbelievable what this camera is capable of doing in camera to stabilize your video footage is amazing and it's going to lead to me leaving my gimbal on the shelf most of the time because if i don't have to take it with me it's one less thing to charge, it's one less thing to carry, and it just makes the entire setup so much more compact. I shot all this footage handheld, just basically clamping the two cameras together and walking with it, and the stability of footage that I was able to get out of the camera is awesome. It does seem to have some drawbacks though. One thing I noticed was that the panning motion doesn't seem to be smooth very well. In particular, how it eases in and eases out of motion seems to be a bit jerky. And while it tries to make the pans constant, if you speed up or slow down, it seems like it pans at constant speeds and it'll call it like slow pan, fast pan, slow pan. I noticed this particularly when I was shooting with the images zoomed in uh, or with that with it zoomed in on uh, in linear mode. So I'm not sure. I mean, it is all just software based, so there are going to be some weird little things here and there, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. The other new feature is time warp. So while our GoPro Hero 6 had video time lapse and photo time lapse, the new GoPro Hero 7 Black only has time warp and then photo time lapse. If any of you guys have seen hyperlapsed videos on the internet, these are time lapses that are super smoothed out and they kind of do this weird like they 3d render the scene and they stitch a bunch of images together and they kind of figure out the camera's path and then it creates this really silky smooth video that kind of feels like you're floating through the scene well now you can create that inside of your gopro camera when you hit uh, time warp video that's the uh, the end result and as you can see from my sample footage i shot this totally handheld walking to the beach and it's crazy. It looks awesome. It looks amazing. It's totally stabilized. Rendering something like this out in After Effects or any time warp software or sorry, hyperlapse software would have taken a long, long time. It does it in camera and it saves it and you play it back as a standard video file. Now, if you really want to see how much better this is, compare it to the time lapse video I shot at the same time using my GoPro Hero five super super cool can't wait to see what people do with this the other thing i really like about how they've implemented this time warp feature is that while you're picking the speed at which you want your time warp video to be played at you can act they actually give you a little a little description of how fast certain speeds are going to play that footage back so if you go into 15 times it'll tell you how much video you have to shoot to create how, much, how long your final video is going to be. Great information to have in there right in camera and it, it's just nice to see that in, integrated into the UI and saving the user having to go off and put it into some time-lapse calculator somewhere. Raw photo mode is still available on the Hero 7 and it's still available in time-lapse photo mode although just like on the Hero 6 you can't shoot raw photos if your intervals are anything shorter than five seconds. The other big launch feature was super photo mode. And as far as I can tell while using it, it's basically just doing a better job of picking the settings to take photos automatically. And this seems like what most cameras do when you try to take photos. So I'm a little bit lost why it's not just like takes better photos than before feature. Good. Um, 
the the other thing is that this feature, because I think it integrates HDR in some way, means that if you enable it, you have to disable RAW mode. And if I'm going to go shoot photos with my GoPro Hero 7, then chances are I'm going to at some point want to put them in Lightroom to tweak them to the way I want them to look. So it's not something that I'm going to find or I yeah I find particularly useful because if I'm going to go out and shoot photos, chances are because I'm going to import video on my computer, I'm going to import the photos anyway. So I might as well throw them in Lightroom and then just edit them the way I want them to look. Uh, if a camera has RAW mode, I'm, I'm generally just going to use RAW mode and kind of do away with any of the in-camera HDR stuff that it can do. That's been my experience anyway. I don't know. If you guys think that the uh, the super photo mode is super cool, then then leave it down below. But, I mean, tell me why I'm wrong. This brings us to the final launch feature of the Hero 7 Black, and that was live streaming. Now, I've got a problem because my Hero 7 got to me before the launch of the camera, which means that the app doesn't yet support the Hero 7, which means I can't actually test live streaming. So expect a video on live streaming next week when I actually have time to play with it and figure out how it works and see in which cases it's going to be useful. Also, it might be a good time to do the first ever live stream on this YouTube channel. Let me know what you think. That covers the four features that GoPro thought were cool with their new camera, but I found some other more subtle changes when I was playing with the camera that I thought were pretty neat. The biggest thing that I saw was in the interface. Gone is the square boxy interface of the Hero 5 and Hero 6. It's been replaced with a much more kind of 2018 uh, looking rounded edged icon based interface. For the most part, it seems like a pretty simple UI upgrade and the functionality is pretty much the same. Everything you could change before, you can still kind of change. The main difference is how you change mode. On the Hero 6, you would tap the mode icon and then select the desired, desired mode and then you could change your sub mode. On the Hero 7, you swipe the screen to change mode and then in order to change the sub mode, you have to go click on the mode icon. Now, this will be something you'll adjust to really quickly, but in my first few days using it, I kept tapping the mode icon and then have just changing sub modes, which was, I'll figure it out. In order to change video settings on the Hero 6, you'd swipe in from the right. Now on the Hero 7, you tap the uh, information bubble at the bottom of the screen. To view playback on the Hero 6, you'd swipe in from the left. Now you swipe up from the bottom and swiping down from the top on the Hero 6 would bring up global camera settings. That hasn't changed. That is the same on the Hero 7. The other thing that's changed, which was actually quite noticeable, is the speed of quick capture. So if you use that mode where you just push the shutter button and it starts recording, well, that mode has gotten faster. On the Hero 7 now, it takes just three seconds from pushing the shutter button to the camera actually starting to record. In comparison, the Hero 6 took about four and a half seconds. Now that's a big improvement, but it's still a fairly long time. And three seconds is still enough time that if you're trying to catch someone who's about to fall off the roof, well, you're probably gonna miss them. There's one other record option, I this is what you'd call it. You can tap it and then tap either 15 or 30 seconds. And then when you click the shutter button, it just records for 15 or 30 seconds and then just stops recording. So if you're like me and you like to record little short segments of video because you've realized that recording for an hour and a half at a time is going to lead to a massive headache when you go to edit, this could be a pretty nice little setting and let you really easily capture a whole bunch of short segments. The only thing is though, you might end up shooting for 15 seconds and then the thing you were trying to capture was in the next seven uh, and then not have it. It is nice though, it has this little red ring that walks around the screen as you're recording so you know exactly how much time is left in your recording. And of course at any time you can push the shutter button again to stop recording. Pretty much brings us to the conclusion, just some rapid fire stuff. It's still waterproof to 10 meters or 33 feet. It's still got voice control. It'll still shoot 4K at 60 FPS. It'll shoot 1080p at, or yeah, shoot 1080p at 240 frames per second, just like the Hero 6. So there hasn't been much of a change in terms of record mode. It's still got voice control. It's still got the same lack of accessories in the box. You get the two adhesive mounts, one curved and one flat, the frame and one buckle mount and a USB type C cable. Uh, so nothing too much exciting really there. Uh, it's basically the, the only two things 
that are going to set the Hero 7 apart from the Hero 6 are going to be that hyper smooth video, which, well, it's good. It's still just a step up from the Hero 6. And if you've got a gimbal and a Hero 6, well, be hard pressed to, uh, to get me to upgrade if that was where I was at. I think the hyper warp, sorry, the time warp video is pretty awesome. And if you see yourself using that, go out and check out some hyperlapse uh, videos on the web because some guys have done some super, super cool stuff. And you Google hyperlapse video, a whole bunch of cool stuff will come up. So go check some of those out and get a feel for what you could do with it. But really, it's the hyperlapse and it's the, uh, it's the, all the, 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 what are we ever calling it? The hyper smooth video, the better in camera video stabilization. Those are going to be the two things that, that kind of set this camera apart because image quality wise, resolution wise, it's sitting the same as, as the Hero 6. Now, live streaming could be really cool. And I mean, like I say, I haven't played with it yet. When I do, there'll be a video and maybe we'll end up talking a little bit more about this in the conclusion, in that conclusion, maybe the, the things will change. But for right now, if you go to Hero 6, it's a tough upgrade. If you've got a Hero 5, the in-camera stabilization has gotten a lot, a lot better. So if you don't have a gimbal and you got a Hero 5, well then this could be a pretty compelling offering, especially if you still find yourself using a GoPro a fair bit. Of course though, for those of you out there that want to shoot vertical video with your GoPro camera, there's no other option than the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Until next time, guys, thank you very, very much for watching.